Hi there. So, you need two cameramen, but you got no money. You have a little YouTube channel. We're just trying to hold things together with a limited budget. And, well, you spent all your money on cameras. What do you do? Well, in my case, I'm okay because in this corner, I have my DJI Osmo Pocket 3 with active track which tracks my face and over here I have an Hohem MT2 gimbal with my Sony ZV-E10 Sony camera on the top and it has got the uh, shotgun microphone that I just did a review on by Small Rig and I've got it wired up here I've also got the um, DJI mic hooked up which I might just use that audio, so depending on which audio turns out better, well, we'll see who wins. But I'm going to give you the comparison between the two, because this one has got a shotgun and a lab mic, and this one has just got the DJI mic, so you'll have to tell me which one you like better. So, well, why get this type of setup? Well, you got a two-camera system setup. Multi-camera system setups could be quite expensive. Um, if you're using a, things like a video switcher where you've got to go from one camera to another camera to another camera, you would still need another person to run all these cameras to make sure that everything was in focus, to make sure that your face is being tracked, because you can't do all that yourself and run it. It'd just be too difficult, but I can take and move over here. Now, I've got the zoom shot on the Sony ZV-E10 and on the uh, DJI, of course, they're, well, I've got a digital zoom I suppose I could use, but I don't have the wide angle lens on it. Um, I just have the uh, regular settings uh, straight out of camera. So I believe I have the Sony and Vivid, uh, what you call intelligent auto. Um, a lot of people would say, wow, oh my God, man, you got to put that on s -Log or something like that. So, But a lot of people don't know how to do that sort of thing. Yes, I do know how to do it, but it's also kind of a pain because you got to go in and you got to color grade everything and you got to make sure everything's good. Editing videos can take hours just to get the composition proper. So if I was to stand up, look, I'm still in the camera shot. I'm still in the shot over here. Uh, I've got two cameras tracking me at the same time. Now, mind you, I do have a wired mic, so I'm limited by that. But if I was to show you my, uh, my bicycle, for instance, if I was to take this over and go over to my bicycle and say, okay, we're looking at the uh, bicycle down here. I'm going to crouch down, take a look at that. I can even take the remote control that I have from the Sony and we can uh, zoom out a bit and uh, we can go that route. So if you're going to do the active tracking with the MT2, zoom in all the way, get yourself your head within the shot. And then when you do have to zoom out, you'll be fine. So I'm going to uh, zoom out on this one and show you that if I'm over by the bicycle, now you can see the bicycle. The DJI has got a wide angle shot of the bicycle. And then as we come back in, I can do a slow zoom in on my face. And then I have this camera too. So I have two cameras tracking me. I don't have to really pay too much attention to it. I can even enjoy myself and have my uh, coffee with, uh, I flip this sucker around and uh, guess what? We're having a review. Oh yeah, that's right. We're having a review. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of both of these? Now, there was a guy that did a video comparing the Sony zv 10 with a kit lens against the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. And there was one thing he didn't do though, which is only related to this video, is no AI tracking on both. 
So AI tracking is all the difference. It's like having two robots in your living room at your beck and call doing all the filming. So if you want to do a retake, another take, another take, you're not paying some poor guy by the hour to have to do all that. You're just doing what you got to do. Yeah, you have to tell me if that the sipping of my coffee translated through to the microphones. Now, I also want to uh, talk about the difficulties of one over the other and the advantages. So, obviously, one of the advantages, if I put a um, zoom lens on the Sony, I can zoom in and out. Uh, I've never bought any other lens for the Sony other than the kit lens that came with it. I just couldn't justify the cost. Um, you know, they're always saying, well, you got to get the 13 millimeter or the, the um, 70 to 120 or the 70 to 100 or the 160 to 300. Now, there is one lens, the, the zoom lens, the 55 to 210, and on the crop, it'd be more like 300. And that one might come in handy if you take your camera out and you really need some zoom. But other than that, you know, um, for what I've been using it for, you know, I have... Oh, um, by the way, my new uh, softbox lighting is working out splendid. So if you look over here, just to show you, and I'm going to uh, zoom out a bit with the uh, with the Sony excuse the uh, the mess but hey you know I am a real blue collar guy so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and you'll see that I have a a box over here this little soft box this little soft box has got some lights in it and it is for doing um, uh, product you know showcasing so normally I have the the Sony mounted here pointing straight down and it works beautiful for that because the lighting inside this little box is so controlled i have so many different ways to light it and it's just phenomenal that way and i um i couldn't be happier with that i also have another soft box over here for when i do have to do some shooting over there eh, they run special what can i tell you so Anyways, zooming back in on the Sony with my remote control. I understand that there's a way to control a lot of that on the app. However, this is just easier. You know, I also have a way to control the gimbal with a remote control. I looked up that too, instead of having to use the app on the phone. Not a fan of having to get an app everything you've got to do because sometimes you have to control more than one thing using one phone and you can't control two things at the same time so having things like this can come in handy and um as you can see you know i do wish it kind of zoomed in a little bit smoother in that regard i'm sure that you know maybe sony can improve upon that type thing more so I'm gonna just show um, this camera from this one and uh, what is the best way to do that without taking the active track off so this one here I'm gonna zoom out a bit okay so you can see the um, gimbal setup for the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Oh, well, too much stuff light-wise, that is. Um, so I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to... There we go. So this is the uh, Sony ZV-E10 on top of the uh, gimbal and we're going to get in a little bit closer because of the lighting because I really want you to take a good look at it there's the microphone on top 
there's the AI tracking, there's the gimbal, and I've got it on a really good tripod. So, here we go. And we will, there we go. And I think we will, hang on. Okay, so now we have the active track back on both. I've showed you what the DJI looks like. I've showed you what the Hoham looks like. And by the way, I have a really nice uh, handle set up on it. That's uh, <laughs> cords. <laughs> Yes, cords are a pain. Now we know why wireless is so much better. You will not strangle yourself. So, all right. So we're gonna go back and I'm going to show the handle. See that handle back there? That is a handle that is for the extended grip. And it is not the whole hum handle. It's a different model because it has a little piece on the top where you can mount your monitor because I can mount another monitor onto the tip of the handle. And I really like that. So as you can see, I just got the little screen so I can kind of see myself. There's the microphone. You know, I've got my bubble level. It's a KEF. Uh, um, type of system there on there on the on the tripod and we're going to hang on, there we go detecting the face once again so not too bad on that okay so just trying to the cord on the other microphone it's enough to drive you crazy and uh, but if you're just kind of sitting in one place and moving around just a little bit it's not so bad you know um, like I said I don't have to use the microphone on here I just wanted to do it for comparison you know I could have just had the shotgun mic do its thing and disconnected this one and used the wireless mic on this so, you know, um, we'll uh, get closer to the old ugly mug. So, we've got the two different camera angles. So, I've got two different camera shots, you know. I can bring this one back in a little bit closer. And I've got a zoom-in shot. And I've got this shot. I've even got a motorized camera dolly. To give that more of a movement so you've got some movement in there um, and it's not overly expensive on a setup you know when you compare the setup that I've built compared to a lot of other guys that do photography we're talking tens of thousands of dollars in difference like the money they've spent is just insane I don't know why they they, um, they, they must be suffering from a lot of stress <laughs> paying those bills because, yeah, my gear gets paid off pretty quick. So, and that is one thing that they can be jealous of me if, if they choose to be. So, other than Marcus Picks, he's, he's got the cash. So, Anyways, I want you to see the, the comparison between the two and, and have a good understanding of the cost involved and what I liked and disliked. So with the Sony, you have interchangeable lenses. You can get different kinds of camera shots. You can also use it as a photography camera. You can the DJI too, but eh, you know, like... Um, this is more of a vlogging camera, 
but it does offer me one thing. If I, like I said, when I when I was getting in close to this one to really examine something up close, the lens on the DJI with with the gimbal is good for that. So if you're doing like a product examination, for instance, if I had something in my little light box and I wanted to slowly creep in on it and 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 get a good shot of it that way. This is a perfect camera for that. It's got a one inch sensor, it gives good color, good picture quality. You know, I can get into tight spaces with it. So if I'm using it on, let's say an e-bike or something like that where I really have to get in tight, you're not gonna wanna use the Sony for that. The other thing is convenience. Oh my God, the convenience of the DJI over the Sony, it's not even a hands down comparison. I spent, no word of a lie, 30 minutes going over the balancing of the gimbal to make sure it was balanced correctly. And if you've never balanced a gimbal before, the first thing you have to do is learn how to balance a gimbal. So you got to watch a video or two on just how to properly balance your gimbal. And if you don't do it properly, the gimbal will have like a vibration or a shake to it. And it also, if it's struggling a lot, it's going to wear the battery down. And yeah, that kind of sucks. But if you were to take uh, a camera to a, um, a professional setup, let's say you were going to film a wedding or an event or something like that, the DJI isn't the one that you're not, you're not going to want to take this one unless you're just going to get some B-roll. So B-roll would be just, you know, video of some bushes or you know, you're, you're sending your buddy out to basically catch some video of some things that they can use as like a filler. That's what B-roll really is. It's kind of like a filler, but kind of an interesting filler. So the Sony with a monitor on it, with the gimbal, with the handle, with the everything else and the microphones, it looks like you're there to do some serious business. And you cannot get around the level of professionalism that it exudes. Sony is really good name brand for, hey, you know, we're not messing about. The, you know, the movie industry, uh, for instance, Sony Pictures, you know, all of those um, uh, cameras, Avatar, need I go on, you know, it's just... Sony is becoming the king of cameras and especially video. They're getting really good at it. So good that their sensor is in this gimbal over here. Okay, this is their one inch sensor, probably right out of their ZVE, ZV1, not ZVE1, but ZV1. But it's been upgraded to 10-bit because DJI, and I'm going to switch over to this camera now, has uh, acquired a company called Hasselblad. And I think you may have heard me talk about them before, but they had a camera on the moon. So they, when you acquire a company, you get their intellectual property. When you get their intellectual property, you learn a lot. You can advance your company in, in years just by... In a matter of months so you can get years of advancement within a few months because everything that they have figured out you instantly know the answers to so this is a good thing you know having these two cameras I don't think I have any regrets at all especially that you know I can move over here you know I've got the camera in there Oh, hang on. I <laughs> got the camera in there. Uh, this is what happens. You lose tracking. You can reacquire it easier with the MT2. You lose tracking with the DJI. You've got to go into the menu and you've got to reactivate it. So let's say I lose tracking. I'm going to give an example of that. So, you know, I know that we're kind of sidetracking here, but let's say. So... If you're a hand talker, you can accidentally switch off the tracking. Now I can move out of camera shot, okay? Now I'm back in camera shot. I move out of camera shot. I go like this, and then it's got me again. 
so not a big deal. You could probably fix that in editing, you know, and um, I, I really like having both these systems. They, they offer um, a different characteristic. They're complementary. Better to have this than two of the same thing. But having cameras track you, so if you're moving around and you're just, you know, you need to, you need to be tracked. You know, you want to, you want to say, well, look, this is the remote for the new turntable that I'm going to probably show you in the future that lights up and product showcases things, you know, um, this is a remote that I got with some cheap light that I got that can actually <laughs> turn my phone and activate the, um, the camera record on the phone. So, which is another versatile thing because this is where, you know, things get interesting. So lost it. It gets interesting this way because I can put an action camera on that system. I can put uh, my phone on there and then I can upload a video much quicker because everything is going to be on my phone already than having to pull the SD card out, connect it to my phone, upload the video, and then edit it. That takes time. I will give credit to DJI for this. The wireless transmission to download a video wirelessly through the Wi-Fi from the DJI blows the doors off the Sony. It downloads 10 times faster than through the app on the Sony. And I don't know if they've done any firmware updates. I will try because I really hate pulling out SD cards to do that. But it seems to be the fastest way I can get that uh, video information on my phone, then I can edit it and then get it out. And you know, when you're making YouTube videos and you're by yourself and you've got to edit them and come up with the content and all that good stuff, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. Then you've got to, you know, don't quit your day job because you still need that. And um, I'm going to segue to um, a quick sponsor. So the sponsor of this video, MyProFreelancer.com. So uh, I'm an affiliate of MyProFreelancer. I'm going to give you the affiliate link to them. If you want to know what they can do for you, they have literally thousands of services that they provide everything from you know how to improve your youtube channel or your social media so if you if you're on social media and you're trying to make money with social media go to my pro freelancer and they'll tell you how to do that and all of their prices are listed they're very inexpensive compared to other ways of to do the same thing and you will have um, a quality product. It will be done on the deadline that you need it to be done on. It'll be done at the price that you negotiated because you negotiate your price. You'll have more than one freelancer to choose from and you'll be able to shop around and get the best possible price for what you need to get done. So if you're not very good at video editing, for instance, and you want a professional editor to go over your videos, you can get them to do it. If you're having trouble getting your YouTube channel monetized and you need uh, to use Google ads and you need someone that knows about SEO, search engine optimization, and getting your, your, um, you know, your audience to grow, go to my pro freelancer and they'll help you with that. So that's our sponsor for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you can see the difference between the two camera setups because they are very different. You know, I was going to put the black mist filter on here, but I thought, eh, it'll just keep everything au naturel for tonight. 
and um, you know but the softbox lighting uh, lighting and microphones are so important you know and I really should have invested in that a lot sooner than I did I thought that I could get away with the small little camera top lights but they really don't uh, help as much as getting that quality as uh, as a softbox will so if I had to give any advice on lighting get softbox lighting if you're shooting YouTube videos especially at nighttime if you're in a well-lit home or well-lit apartment and it's daytime then you could probably get away with this using the natural light okay so thank you for all your support don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're new check out some of my other videos I got lots of really interesting videos that you might uh, want to check out and you can also see my journey from when I started with just my phone and worked my way up to more expensive cameras because I do have other cameras that I use for photography I have a Canon and um, with different lens but they're just for taking pictures they're not really for doing videos you know probably have to get believe it or not more cameras in the future so yes if you're going to get into YouTube and you're going to be serious about it it is going to take an investment of your energy your time and your money and also you need to have things to talk about that people want to hear so if you don't have anything interesting to say well you're not going to get a lot of views and you're not going to get a very big audience i'm still growing my channel after i think it's two years now and it is a very slow and methodical process as youtube is getting bigger and bigger it is becoming more and more competitive and more and more difficult so it is important that you're if you're going to do it be serious about it but don't bankrupt yourself you don't need to bankrupt yourself getting all the gear and don't listen to all of the advice pick and choose what works for you okay I've shown that at the Christmas parade that I was at when I was comparing the MT2 gimbal against the DJI I just had my smartphone in the gimbal filming the video wasn't bad the video was pretty good okay now I'm sure the pixel peepers out there and all the really fussy photographers would say well this is not right and you know those guys can really tune a camera and I gotta give them credit for that they can tune a camera so that it shoots really really nice they know a lot more tricks about shooting videography than I do so if you really want to get those type of shots then by all means but it's still not going to happen overnight you're not going to watch a video on how to do that stuff and then the next day be an expert that's not going to happen you still got to have some gear you still got to be able to you know kind of use what you got to use but that's why I kind of like uh, Marcus Pix. So Marcus Pix is a guy out of California who originally grew up in Canada. And he is always trying to show you how to do more with less. So, and, and that to me is very important. So uh, when you're a blue collar person, because that's who my audience is. My audience is the people that punch nine to five, they work in a warehouse, they work in a restaurant, you know they they're working a you know a job that they wish probably you know offered them more or or felt that you know this is my job now don't get me wrong i'm grateful for my job i'm very happy that my bills are getting paid and and all the rest of that but there's some things that you're always lacking when you have a certain creativity and passion for life so it doesn't fill all the gaps but it's good to have a job better than not to have one for sure and um, so I cater to those people because a they work really hard for their money and they don't have money to throw around and experiment on well can I try this Oh, this doesn't work I'll try that well that doesn't work 
Well, when you're talking about cameras that can run you between two and three thousand dollars, say, well, the two thousand dollar camera didn't work out, so I'll try the four thousand dollar one, or maybe the ten thousand dollar one, or the you know, we don't got that kind of money to be throwing around to try this or try that. When you're talking about lenses, there's a guy out there, uh, Mark Wemmels, I think it is, yeah. Anyways, this guy must have a collection of camera lenses longer than my body, you know? Like, if you were to... <laughs> he's got a lot of camera lenses. And he has some really good ideas, and he, has, he, he knows a lot about camera lenses. I really do enjoy watching his videos to learning about the camera lenses. But camera lenses can cost as much, if not more, than the camera. I've bought some expensive lenses. I know what they cost. So that's got to be, you know, when you're a blue-collar person and you're just trying to, you know, make something work. You know, hey, kit lens, you know, kit lens on this camera I like it you know it, it it's doing the job if I had some disposable money would I get some of the other lenses yeah I might try them out but I kinda like the zoom feature I kinda like the I wish it was smoother mind you I wish it was a more of a slower zoom I'm gonna see if I can't adjust that because I, I think it was on fast before but I think this is the slow so but I wish it was more uh, you know, gradual, like really slow when it zoomed in and out because it would be more cinematic, I guess, and just a lot more professional looking than than uh, going like this. Okay, see how it kind of jerks? Uh, it, I wish it was a little bit smoother, but, you know, what are you going to do? It's not an expensive lens. Would I pay 1500 to $2,000 for a lens that did a little bit smoother? Well, that costs more money than the camera. That doesn't make any sense. So, you see where I'm going with this. This DJI Osmo Pocket 3, which everyone keeps calling a game changer, um, is kind of a game changer because of one factor, is that the price of it and the value of what you're getting for your money is actually pretty good. Even at $1,000, you're talking about getting a wireless microphone, an extra battery, an extra carrying case, the other carrying case, wide-angle lens, you know, a little stand, uh, you know, the convenience of just turning it on and, and working it compared to a regular gimbal setup. That is a game changer, you know, and, and DJI is not new to this game. They had the Pocket, the Pocket 2, but this one is a lot bigger and, the, you know, they've actually made it and designed it more for real uh, videography and it's got more settings, you know, you can really get into it now. And it's a very competitive space. So, anyways that's it for this video um more videos to come you know i hope that this discussion uh helps you in making your decision on what to buy and what not to buy if you can only get one camera and you need to film a whole bunch of different kind of things and you're not too sure maybe go with this uh, osmo because it's going to Give you the microphone which is decent microphone it's going to give you the camera it's downloads to your phone fast so everything's going to work right out of the box if you want something that just work out of the box you want something simple that's your guy now if you want to have more versatility and you want to be able to change lenses if you need to and mind you like i haven't gotten any other lenses but at least I have that option if you want to have some zoom optical zoom if you want to have um, a bigger screen to see yourself if you're filming yourself because I even at a distance I can see myself better with this screen if you want to have a 3.5 millimeter mic jack where you can plug in better microphones 
if you want it to look a little more professional and more studio like then this is the system that will help you more it'll have more things oddly enough the little guy has 10 bit colors uh, versus 8 bit 16 million colors versus 1 billion colors that's the difference can the human eye really see the difference well that's debatable some people can I guess some people can't some people don't care as long as it looks good you're okay so this would be um, a more expensive setup by the time you get done paying nine hundred dollars for the camera and then another 50 for that microphone and another 400 because it's not on sale anymore for the, the gimbal you're going to be looking at more money than this and you'll have to buy the tripod you'll have to buy the remote control for another thirty dollars and uh, you're gonna have to buy the SD card by the way you have to buy the SD card for this one this one takes 512 gigs so but you can get a little closer it's a little more versatile so pick your poison really think about where you're gonna start if I was really just gonna start and I was gonna film myself this one if I was going to film a lot of other things and maybe need it for photography as well, then I'm going to go with the Sony. So it's it's really, you know, on the edge, you know. But um, you could even get several of these little guys that take up a lot less space. That's the other thing too. The footprint on this, nothing compared to that, you know. Uh, you could have five of these little guys tracking you you could sync this mic up to probably all of them at once I don't have the money to buy another one to see if I can do that but I'm sure that I could link this microphone up to more than one possibly at the same time and even if I couldn't I can still use the audio from one and just put it over top of all the other overlays so yeah there's a lot to know it's not cut and dry anymore. There's a lot of gray. So, anyways, we're going back and forth between the two cameras just to show you what that's like. And I hope you enjoyed that. And I really enjoyed making this video and the other ones that I've been doing. Uh, during the holidays, got a lot more exciting things to show you. And uh, I, uh, you know, I think 2024. I know a lot of people complain about 2023. Well, 2024, I think, is going to be the year where things kind of turn around for a lot of people. So I, uh, I'm feeling good about 2024. So if you had a bad 2023, never fear. 2024 is coming right up. So take care, be safe at work, and I'll see you at the next video.